Witch in Charm's Way, a cozy mystery audio book, written and narrated by R. K. Dreaming. Part 30 Chapter 17 An Unexpected Discovery Why? I said, staring at Chris Constantine in astonishment, relief flooding through my body. Would you prefer to stay here? he said still holding the door of the prison cell open. His expression gave nothing away. I wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I scrambled out of there as fast as I could, without even thanking him, and nearly ran out towards the front of the police station, where I found Allegra and Jasper sitting on a bench near the front door, waiting for me. They both leapt to their feet the moment they saw me, relief washing over their faces. Oh, thank goodness, Allegra said, rushing towards me. She grabbed me and wrapped me in a huge hug. She must have seen how awful I looked. You look terrible, she said. Are you all right? I felt terrible. I had been frantic in there. I thought the game was up. But I couldn't tell her that. She didn't know. The life of a convict will do that to you, I joked weakly. Stop it, she said. It's not funny. We were worried for you. We didn't know who they might have you in there with. I laughed weakly. Yeah, me too. I thought he was going to toss me in with a bunch of miscreants, but it turned out I was the only miscreant in the place. Allegra had finally let go of me, but now that I was free, it seemed it was Jasper's turn to hug me. He wrapped me in his rather strong arms and pretended to wail, Poor baby! It made me laugh. We thought we'd lost you for good, he said in an overly dramatic, tearful voice. Shut up, Allegra said, swatting his shoulder. But she looked mollified that he had made me giggle. Me too, I said. I thought my days were numbered. Truly, I didn't know how I was going to survive the long, dark night. You two are so cute, said Allegra. If only I had my camera. I pushed Jasper away. To capture me in my moment of infamy? Thank goodness you didn't. It's not funny, actually, she agreed. I was on the verge of having to call Granny to see if she could do something about it. You know that Granny wouldn't have hesitated in kicking up a fuss. But then I thought maybe I ought to... Uh, her voice trailed off. She looked embarrassed and a little worried. I stared at her suspiciously. You thought what? I said. Her cheeks went pink. Well, <clears throat> she cleared her throat and looked at me anxiously. Don't be mad, Esme. I thought you might prefer me not actually bringing Granny into this. A West Brim in a prison cell, she would have been furious. Her voice trailed off again. And, I asked, looking at her with a feeling of mounting horror. And so I told Agent Constantine that, uh, that you'd been through a difficult illness and a bad breakup with your husband and it had all been a bit too much for you. She screwed up her face as if it was painful to admit she had done this. I clapped my hands to my cheeks in sheer mortification. Darn right she should be screwing up her face. She knew how mad this would make me. I can't believe you told him that, I hissed at her. Oh my gosh, Chris Constantine had just been told that I was a pathetic loser. I cringed at the thought of it. Oh, I can't believe you told him that, I said again. I'm so sorry, she wailed. I didn't know what else to say to him. I thought if I explained that you were acting out and that you weren't normally like that, maybe he would take pity on you. I covered my face with my hands. Oh, Allegra, why couldn't you have come up with something else? My insides were squirming. It was mortifying knowing that Chris Constantine knew what had happened with the breakdown of my marriage. I wanted the floor to open up and swallow me. 
No wonder he had looked at me with such pity in his eyes. My inside squirmed harder. I'm so sorry, said Allegra, reaching for my hands to squeeze them. But it worked, didn't it? I thought it wouldn't because he didn't say anything. And then he went to interview Oberon Senior. And then he let him go and I was really angry. But now I think maybe he made a deal with him to drop the charges. Because after that he went and let you out of there immediately. What? I gasped in astonishment. You mean he let Oberon Senior out? That vampire killed Lily. It had to be him. I can't believe he just let him go like that. I was shocked and more than a little angry. Not at Allegra, just at life. My shoulders sagged. I was tired too. It had been a long night. Quite frankly, all I wanted to do was go home and collapse into bed and not think at all about the oncoming dawn. In fact, now that I had thought of dawn, all I wanted to do on earth was get the heck out of this police station in case Agent Constantine changed his mind and decided to lock me up again. Let's get out of here, I said, and hustled the other two out of the door. I can't believe he let him go, I lamented again later when we were back home in Mansion House. Allegra had ether hopped me and Jasper back here. When we'd opened the door, we had been greeted with the surreal vision of a yawning Aunt Adele with her ghostly hair in ghostly rollers and a ghostly nightcap on top of them floating towards us. She told us that we simply must eat all of the things she had left out for us and she wouldn't take no for an answer. After making us some hot cocoa as if we were still children, she had floated off to bed, yawning widely and still thinking that we had just been out for a spot of fun. I realised I was famished and Allegra and Jasper must have been too because we scoffed down all the food she had left out for us. To my joy, it was not just cakes this time. She had made delicious little spiced lamb kebabs, grilled on skewers, served with crispy salad and still warm, fresh naan breads. It was exactly what I needed, the lamb in particular. I stuffed the last juicy morsel in my mouth and savoured it. Perhaps more red meat would help put a stop to all of my cravings, I thought interestedly. It was something that I was going to have to explore. Jasper and Allegro were yawning. Do you two want to stay the night? I asked them. Allegra shook her head, but she looked really tired. She was disguising a yawn behind her hand. It hit me that it probably hadn't been very safe for the three of us to ether hop together when she had been so exhausted. Ether fraying was something that witches and wizards lived in horror of. Actually, that's not even a question, I said firmly. Of course you two are staying. Allegra, I can't have you ether hopping anywhere again tonight, not until after you've had some sleep. I took them up to my tower, to the guest bedrooms which were below my own floor. Together we managed to find some bed linens and make up the beds and I bid them good night. I left them with Allegra helping Jasper brush his teeth with magic from her wand since I had no spare toothbrushes. They were giggling as I walked out and bursts of foam kept flying out of his mouth. I slept like the dead and woke up in the morning feeling possibly more tired than I had felt when I'd gone to bed. After getting ready for the day and slathering on a ton of sunblock, I went downstairs to find Jasper and Allegra in the kitchen, trying to help Aunt Adele make breakfast. No, 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 she was saying. Now will you two leave me in peace and go and sit down while I finish this off? Allegra caught sight of me. You're up, she said excitedly, and came over to hug me as if she hadn't seen me in weeks. Morning, I said sleepily. I was very glad when Aunt Adele thrust a cup of steaming coffee in my hands. It was exactly what I needed. When Jasper and Allegra looked like they were going to go into the cafe, I quickly shook my head. 
I can't face all that sunlight, I grumbled, as if I was too sleepy for it. Let's go to the family lounge instead. This sunlight situation was becoming dire. I couldn't even spend normal time indoors with my family. I needed to find a cure desperately and soon. In fact, as soon as I got rid of Le Grand Jasper, I intended to do what Aunt Adele had told me to do all along and go up to the Black Tower to beg the ghosts to let me take a look at the family grimoire. Hi, you've reached the end. Comment the code words, because Nancy Drew says so, to confuse everyone who hasn't reached this part of the story yet. And thanks for playing along.